Week two of the Pro League. We're back at it again live from Copenhagen and we're gonna be jumping straight back into some more Counter-Strike. Fresh off of Katowice, just a couple of days ago, the grand final did go down. Now we stand once again, jumping back into the realm of Pro League. Just our second week as we have had so many tournaments back to back, the players are ready. Most of the IEM Katowice teams are taking a break, but some will be battling out today. And if you didn't catch Katowice, this will act as a little bit of a reminder. Fnatic, your champions of IEM Katowice. What a journey. And some of the storytellers, in fact, all of them, that got to be part of that grand final. The voices of the game and the analyst desk are joining me to break it down. We have Chad Burchill, Janko Paunovic, our analysts, and indeed our casters are with us as well. We do have Henry G and Sadikis, the guys that... I don't even know how you're going to cast after that best of five. That was a lot of Counter-Strike. With a lot of enthusiasm and heart. Absolutely. Okay. And you know what else? <laughs> enthusiasm. Was, by the way, after game one, I messaged someone and was like, this is going to be over real soon. I'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll hang out. Don't worry. See you in a minute. <laughs> Seven hours later. Yeah. Oh, we've all been there, man. I've, uh, I fell into that trap as well. We've so, all fallen uh, into that trap. Don't make dinner reservations in a best of five final. That's for certain. But this is the pre-show. It's actually brought to you by Gameflip. They're celebrating the ESL Pro League new season, season seven, by bringing you out a 10,000 US dollars in prizes, the CSGO skins, some in-game items, hardware, and I think it's even some game time, gaming gift cards as well. You can visit that at gameflip.com slash ESL to take part. Now, gentlemen. Today's schedule, we have to get into it because we have, as always, new season, more games of Counter-Strike, more maps as well. We've got a whole three games to bring you, three best of two. And if we start talking about this one, the first port of call has to be the fact that we are going to get to see more from Mouse Sports and Na'Vi. I mean, neither of these teams showed up over IM Katowice. Yeah, they didn't qualify. Yeah. We did see them the week before in Kiev and we were all there as well. So uh, we've had a lot of Counter-Strike over the last 20 or so days. But look, these two teams going back into the Pro League, they've had that break. They've been able to see what everyone's been doing at Katowice. Should come out swinging here today. I want to see more out of Rops. want to see more out of Simple. Some uh, fantastic scenes from, from Starletter. Yeah, and hopefully for Na'Vi, they didn't spend all their time watching IEM. They actually put some extra practice in because you could tell mostly before Star Series, they had some glaring issues with the team struggling a bit in Pro League too, but they looked better throughout the course of that tournament. And that gives you hope moving forward that with some extra work being put in, they can be back uh, in, in playoffs and back as a true contender. And talking of playoffs, of course, Katowice, that grand final that we are referencing, was an absolute slog. Fnatic, who are in the Pro League and haven't had a fantastic start here, did manage to pick it up. And what better way than just truly really getting our head around it than taking a look at it? Five maps of Counter-Strike, 149 rounds, seven hours of Counter-Strike in the Spodek. Let's have a quick reminder of how that played out. Spodek, it is time! As IEM Katowice 2018 entered its last day, only two teams were left. FaZe Clan were going up against the 2016 champions Fnatic, and only one of these teams would see their name etched into the iconic trophy, forever among the legends of Katowice. Going into the first map, Cash, Fnatic started off on the CT side, taking the pistol round and successfully keeping FaZe at bay in the second. But that's as good as it would get for Fnatic, as FaZe Clan asserted their dominance, taking Cash 16 to 5. The highway reads it well, but he's got to force the fight. Rain's going to shut it down. 16 5 for FaZe. Inferno was the second map of the series, and despite a drubbing in the first, Fnatic were looking for revenge. Some very tight rounds culminated in overtime, where both teams gave their all. It was a tale of back and forth, as both teams were eyeing the win. But Fnatic's in-game leader Golden helped close out the map in favor of the Swedes. Scores were now 1-1 one one in the series with the potential three maps left to play. 
It was time for overpass, and now Fnatic found their foothold, despite Guardian arguably making the play of the tournament. Suddenly the last alive. Oh, this is a done round. Guardian now is the question as to whether he'll save the AWP. Good flashbang. Could get a couple more out of this one. And oh! Fnatic are starting to crumble. What's going on? One player has found three kills. Guardian looking to ace this one out. This could be one of the best rounds of the entire tournament so far. Four kills picked up. It's down the crimped. Dumpster, that means Guardian knows exactly where to look. Oh! And he's got all five. There he is. But Fnatic stayed composed and rode home the victory with a 16-7 scoreline. It was time to dive into Mirage, and FaZe needed to win the map to keep their hopes alive. But is it enough to keep it alive as he just has to hold oh! Nico, and he does that, but Flush is burned! He's burned alive! It's it's he done. couldn't get the defuse! The Molotov makes it just far enough in phase four, map three! Can you believe it? What a final it's starting out to be! Train was where the final would be settled, and Flusha took the phase dream and crushed it well and truly. Finally redeemed from last year. Get their first IEM championship. It only takes one kill, Flusha. He's not gonna allow that easily. Gets it down to just Guardian, 17 HP. And that gives Flusha the upper hand as well. Flash out. He's faced off of it. Forced off the angle. And Flush has got us going the distance. Every inch of the way. JW finally silenced. But it's just Guardian. And Olaf just Olaf. Comes. And Olaf gets paid back by his old team. Fnatic has done it. In their first event win since 2016, Fnatic can once again lift the trophy and call themselves champions of IEM Cattle Beats in 2018. What on earth was that grand final? Just watching it, I mean, like... So it wasn't a dream, that was... Really it was not a dream, <laughs> yeah. That's what actually happened. Fnatic beat FaZe in a best of five. <laughs> like if, you told, if you told me that going into the tournament, I just wouldn't have believed you. That yeah. was, that's unbelievable. Wasn't and it? I think we can be quite candid with this, Matt. Yeah. You, I mean, I'm sure you're not, you're not afraid of saying that you did not expect a no. good grand final coming into that. No, well, I mean, FaZe, there was, there was a couple that. things that maybe suggested okay. it was possible, okay. but it was one of those, like, very small percentage things. Obviously, they had a really start pro, st bad start to Pro League. Poor Star Ladder went home, didn't even talk to each other they were that mad about it they were that upset with it they did beat phase however two nothing in the group stages and that was encouraging and they were playing sort of the major level we saw from them which was competitive throughout mm -hmm. remember they, they only went out in the quarters very closely to sk um but yeah after map one i thought no way not, not a chance fanatics even in this and yeah then and then, then we get to talk about one player in particular i mean yanko flusher has to be a conversation here because we have not seen you know there is all these memes about oh 2015 flusher showed up but truly this was this was a player that many considered to be one of the top in the world that year True, I don't think even 2015 Flasha would pull out two ace clutches in the fifth map of a best of five to basically lead his team to victory. It was just very impressive uh, for me to see how he capitalized on some of the pressure that was mm. obviously on the players of face. He was just very calm and collected, very intelligent play. It wasn't any mad flicking going around from Flasha. He was just literally out playing and out positioning his opponent. I mean, just want, before we say a good goodbye to our casters, Henry, sure. I have to know your thoughts on that, because Train, the amount of rounds where you, I heard the words out your mouth like, this one's over, there's no well, coming back. Well, that's the thing, that, that's kind of why I love Counter-Strike yeah. in a way, that you can have those moments. Whatever happens, 1v5 is still possible, although we see it very rarely. Flush out, if he gets in those certain positions, he can play it well. I always think, okay, get one or two kills here, but then sure. all of a sudden you can see his next play, you can see his, like, his mindset and where he's going with it. And then it starts to unfold. You think, well, if he does this and that happens, all of a sudden the whole round... It's like a up. flow chart. Yeah, like, it's actually, really cool to watch. Work. And the anchor's absolutely right. Everything he was doing was actually really methodical and thought out. And then, obviously, that performance was world-class. I think that's what it took for a team like Fnatic to take down FaZe. They have to be operating at maximum efficiency and FaZe to be dropping off and crumbling in a final like they usually do. Yeah. And then things happen, happened and... There we are. Fnatic will take it. Incredible. Yeah, we'll be talking to you guys, of course, when you do get into that match. But thank you so much. That's Henry G and Sadikis. They'll be casting your first game. In fact, all of the games tonight. So they'll be enjoying that one. But for now, Chad, big question. Mm. The conversation that's happening right now in the, amongst the kind of analytical community slash the community is that FaZe, despite not lifting another trophy, despite this being somewhat of a curse in terms of grand finals and not converting, are still considered the best team in the world. What do you reckon? Well, they're the team who's making it to all the grand finals, right? They're consistently getting there. They're never going, they're never going to build an era or a legacy if they can't win the grand finals, yeah. but you can rank them as the number one team in the world because they keep making it to the grand finals. They've lost to a lot of different opponents now in these kind of matchups, and it's getting to the point where you question how they're going to solve that piece of the puzzle that seems to be lacking, but you can't argue the fact that these guys are the best team in the world because of what they're able to achieve, the fact mm -hmm. they're able to get there time and time again. And a team that recently actually got announced to be, well, 
put by HLTV in the top five was Mouse Sports. They're going to be playing. They got the, the num themselves the number four spot after what has been a fantastic start to their year. Of course, we saw them in Kiev. Yanko, you can explain all about that. But we'll bring up the schedule so you can see who they're going to be facing and how today's schedule does shape up. We get to see Mouse Sports taking on none other than North Navi as well. After the second game, we'll be taking on the Space Soldiers, who have been having a fantastic start so far to their Pro League, despite some doubts. And we get Envy versus LDLC as well. We're going to have to have a bit of cat and mouse for our first series. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting because Mouse Sports, a team on the rise, uh, finally fulfilling some of the potential that uh, we've seen from them after they made the roster change back in the summer, adding in uh, Sticko and Sunny. So mm -hmm. they've played really good Counter-Strike. I mean, they're, in my opinion, the best Mirage team in the world. They can just play against any team. They always find ways to win rounds on that T side, the more difficult side. So I'm really looking forward to seeing them play in the future while for North, Yes, a new lineup with a roster change, but they have a lot to prove. A lot of has been invested into this team and uh, you know, the expectations were set pretty high and they have definitely not lived up to them so far. And talking about so far, I mean, the b best way to show that is our standings. We'll show you exactly what you have seen so far, at least in the pro league. And Chad, I'll kind of toss this over to you as we do take a glance over where things are going so far, admittedly, Mouse Sports untarnished record yeah it's still early stages obviously and we say this almost every time we you come around to, yeah. uh, but the thing is in these early stages it, it can be anyone's ball game right anyone can be there towards the top of the pack but we're seeing teams who we want to see up the top Astralis, phase fanatic navi they're all doing pretty good early on obviously envious they'll be playing their first game tonight we haven't even played a match yet they're the only ones left in the whole division yet to play a game uh, the, look we started the, the whole the whole week one with looking at who we thought was going to finish up where there's so early right now in the season look. Things are looking, you know, hopefully as we expect them to. Heroic, hopefully, you know, down the bottom with AGO, they can just battle it out for relegation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and I, I think Navi was a big question mark coming into this one. You know, some people had them at the bottom of the of the league yeah. even. But uh, for now, they're off to a good start. And seeing the way, you know, Simple has been performing recently, you figure like just he himself can carry that team to the playoffs. I mean, that is the big question. The Ninjas in Pajamas making a run at IM Katowice yet to make too much of an impact in the Pro League. We'll get to see some more from them this week here for our second week of play for Season 7 of the ESL Pro League. And just a glance at North America as well. Now, we aren't covering that, but we are from this very studio with some of your favorite faces, and this is how it's gone so far. Complexity, luminosity. I mean, some of the names that you wouldn't <laughs> yeah. necessarily and expect. Rolls, oh. Renegades, and Splice. You know, Jason, team. you know Jason has a fun <laughs> night every night, doesn't he? Boy, we, there's a positive. Uh, Optic play this evening for the first time, so that mismatch of North America Americans and Europeans will be uh, in yeah. the server for the first time. They get their debut this evening. North Sword player as well. Yeah, Config. Cajun B and Config. So okay. those two boys will be having a crack at some easy frags, I guess, in that North American region. It's going to be a lot of fun, actually, just to see how comfortable they look coming into this region from where, they've, of course, they've been playing in the European Pro League. Now they stride into North America, which is, uh, you know, in undisputably a little more uh, separated top from bottom. So there are going to be a couple of games where you do see Config just run around and have fun. Absolutely. It's not as competitive as, as the EU region is, but there's still a lot of good teams. And obviously we have the 12 teams instead of 14, right? Some spots yeah. there uh, have been left vacant. So that will give potentially uh, an opportunity to some of these teams on the outskirts, you know, Splice, NRG to maybe secure a spot in the playoffs. Now, Mouse Sports, as we said, already have been doing a fantastic mm. job. They are our first game, and one player in particular caught our eye. It is, of course, Rops, the young Estonian player found and scavenged from the depths of Counter-Strike and has so far spread his wings in a very big way coming into 2018. Some caught, called him a cheater. Some called him an up-and-coming superstar, and we put him under the microscope. Let's check it out. Robin Rops Cole, 18 years of age and a talented rifler for the Counter-Strike GO team, Mouse Sports. Rops in the perfect position, he goes them down! UMP 45 Massacre! Rops grew up in Estonia and started playing CSGO in 2014. His parents weren't happy with the time he spent in front of the computer, but despite that, he quickly got noticed in the CSGO community. David, one more minute. Okay. Good, goodbye, So let the speculation whether or not he was cheating. Watch this shit, man. He just like weird, bro. Like, why are you doing that? I've been watching Rops, and do you know what I see? I see good fundamental Counter Strike. Fundamentals. The accusations eventually dropped, and he was now ready to take on the pro scene with Mouse Sports. 
Despite being so young, he already has a lot of experience as a pro player. Lately, winning Star Series with Mouse Sports. A team of international stars, Mouse Sports will take Star Ladders Championship. Even though he still has not even played one year as a pro player, he still has made a name of himself, as he is still mentioned as one of the biggest talents in the professional Counter-Strike scene. He's been setting the world on fire. He is a young sensation from Estonia. He has been playing very well and been instrumental into Mouse Sports' success to the tail in 2017. Very aggressive, playing years above his age and looking like a superstar in the making. You heard Henry there as well saying he's been playing years above his age and that's something I find very interesting when you talk about you know how age does have an impact on Counter-Strike. It's not a conversation we very often have but when we say he's a youngster often we actually use that term for just new to the scene. This mm. guy's new to the scene and he is young as hell. He couldn't do an interview right because he was, uh, had to do schoolwork today. That's yeah that was funny actually. <laughs> We're like oh let's get him on we'll get the microphone we'll talk to him. He's doing his schoolwork, guys. Probably doing his homework right now. Got to get early. Got to get up early for his uh, school run. Yeah, I, I think it's well very important. You know, you keep up with your Hell education yeah. and, uh, in with line in CS. But I think for Rops, one of the most impressive thing is right. I, actually, I thought it was hilarious. Freakazoid analyzing Rops' <laughs> play. That's like let's ignore that. But Rops, you know, usually with young players coming into the scene, it's because they're extremely mechanically skilled. They have amazing game, and you bring them there to add firepower to your team, and you hope that they are you know, knowledgeable enough and then you build on that and they gain experience and they become really good with Rops from the start. He had great game sense, you know, even on a competitive level. So that's something that was mm. a bit surprising, you know, how good he is from the start in that department. And obviously, he aim was, his aim was also good enough uh, for him to join an international roster. And that is quite a rare combination, right, Chad? I mean, when it, like as Yanko's kind of already insinuating, you do often, there's plenty of players that are incredibly competent when it comes to putting a crosshair on a head. Mm. But what comes with it is, I mean, as Richard said, actually, fundamentals. He has the fundamentals as well at such a young age, which is the, the impressive part. Yeah, I think one of the things is when you come up the way that he did, you come up through the FPL Challenger Series and then get to play with, it, with all the pros in that level, yeah. you are kind of playing for yourself, right? You want to win as a team, you want to play it, but it's, it's not a team, that's an individual thing. You move your way up the ranks as an individual and yeah. you have to have impact more so as an individual than with strategies and stuff. So his fundamentals are more based around, you know, every single duel that he's, he takes has purpose. We talk about people taking lazy fights and not checking corners. His is the opposite. Watching him in the early days, every single corner, every single peak that he made was with a good intent, was with that intention. And that has built a strong base for him to be a solid individual player. Then going into mouse sports with, a, you know, a couple of players who were in the early days were a bit more... I guess, experienced than him. He got to learn very quickly off of these guys, and now he's a, he's a star player. And just from Rops to his team, Mouse Sports as a whole, I mean, we did just kind of, I say just, time does fly, but about two weeks ago, we saw them lift the trophy. Mm -hmm. uh, the first trophy, other than, of course, we saw them at ESG Tour, that was the very first trophy, and we saw them get very close over in Cancun. ECS, yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so they've got, they've got three finals under their belt. We've got two trophies. They are starting to pick up pace. Yeah, and finally perform somewhere where it's not sunny and, and warm, <laughs> yeah, right? In, in the cold, cold Kiev. So that was a great run from Mouse Sports because they beat some big teams along the way, right? Beat G2 in quarterfinals, Liquid, who looked very hot. Uh, in the semis and then taking down the home team Navi with simple obviously in the grand final and uh, I think it was a couple of great challenges for them different types right being the home team you know when you're the favorite and then as an underdog perhaps as a, against a more skilled lineup so, so that is what makes ex uh, Mouse Sports a very very exciting team at the moment we were talking about it in Poland uh, you know how some of these teams like Mouse Sports is coming along Team Liquid right you have Cloud9 while some of the other guys like Astralis, for example, are, are falling off G2, and you wonder how the you know food chain is going to look like a month from now. Yeah, and indeed, it is time for us to dig in. It sounds like the game is ready, gents. We've already talked our heads off about this one, and does mean we get to talk to our casters. Gents, the first one, Mouse Sports did put on a show over in towards Kiev, and it does just beckon, like, what do we have next? What's in store for Mouse Sports? I'd love to know your thoughts. Yeah, certainly they've been underrated for a while. No one's been giving them necessarily the credit. I think that they've, they've, they've earned, they've deserved. And in a lot of ways, I think that they're a team that's improved tremendously, especially bringing in Rops. He's sort of been on the upswing, and Oscar coming back. Yep. You have double ups. Won the game. Just the fact that Chris J in really good form right now. Oscar actually looking like one of the absolute best snipers we have. It's really good to see them coming together and actually recovering from what was a desperate team when Nico was back in there. Remember, there was so many. They had one of these great players, but they never could really post anything promising. When this new project was kind of announced, no one was really thinking, oh, this obviously makes sense now. This is going to be amazing for them. So they've just had to grind it. 
kind of in the doldrums, working their way up each tournament, each month, and getting better and better. Yeah, Absolutely. well, it sounds like the game's ready, guys. I'm actually going to love you and leave you. I'll let I you thought you already did. Yeah, they were so, so focused on us. I thought you were gone. <laughs> so thank you, Alex. Alex. Right, enjoy <laughs> yourselves. Henry G and Sadikus. No worries. Yeah, no, look, uh, getting to jump back in with them as well, obviously not seeing them at IEM is pretty exciting because how much have they done on the off week? Uh, you know, lots of opportunity to play, but obviously a lot of teams at well, IEM, that who was, do you practice against if you're not there to boot That camp? was kind of the funny thing. You win Starliner event, and then you weren't obviously qualified for the next big tournament. It's kind of funny how CSGO works out in that respect. Sometimes that was the same story for Na'Vi, both finalists not making it to Katowice. But we will be starting here on Inferno, and uh, we'll be seeing who other uh, mouse sports will show up today. I'm sure they will. They've, uh, they've had time to kind of decompress after the big win. I'm sure they've not been practicing as much, probably took a couple of days off since that big win. But uh, yeah, they've been able to watch their opposition and work out what will be in store for them as we get into Inferno, Matthew. Yep. I mean, Inferno's great for every team. I just want to point out as well that 2015 was kind of like relived entirely when you have Na'Vi making a final again as well. It's not like they've right. been necessarily on form as of late. So, yeah, and then Fnatic winning, obviously. So, But Inferno, yes, great map. Great map to start on Henry. Why don't you break it down? Here we go then. North will be starting on the T side. Three sets of armor, a couple of smokes, a couple of flashbangs. And uh, we've been looking out for Mercs recently. We've got to cast him a few times over in Katowice, and uh, he was very impressive, especially on the AWP. So that battle we just mentioned, Chris J, and of course, Oscar up against him. So North have got a dedicated, kind of flashier open now. Obviously, Cajun B was removed, and uh, this is a new look, North. And uh, we'll see if they can get any damage done here in the first round. There is a bit of a boost from what I can see from Oscar there yeah, towards the quad side. He's actually yeah. on the flower pots. Exactly what I was going to say. He's on the little ledge, similar to what you'd see at B. Nice shot from Rob's merge goes down. Good and easy, quick and concise. Rob's... Done his homework and now doing real work. That that didn't flow <laughs> quite as nice as I would have liked. But Dude, you get done the his point. homework now doing work on the server. Yeah, Doesn't something like that. But uh, Oscar will go down, but Sticko certainly will not. A couple of kills for him. He's going to find AZ and MSL. That should be the round at this point. They can just fall back as they are towards the site and hold the crossfire. You can see one player waiting at B, and that's going to be Sunny. He is actually very skilled. I'm sure he'll be absolutely fine to just get one of the kills here. There'll be a smoke towards him. But he's fully flashed. This could go a little bit further than I thought. He'll try and deny the plan. They can probably sacrifice one player here. We'll see whether he wants to commit to it. He will be facing from the coffins. But Ooh, Chris J will go down first. That looks like a plan will be happening. He's done his homework, but he's doing his best work from home. Yes. There, there, there we go. Oof. Stiko's going to get Volda. Sunny, by the way. Top. Gabby left in a one versus two top finished player on the scene in the absence of Alu, so that's changed a lot. Gabby's done damage, but he can't get the final kill. Sticker walks back in despite Rops going down to nine. And Sticker, believe it or not, got four kills in that round. It seemed almost quiet the way that he did it and picked them apart. They were very spread out and scattered, but it's all good and all well. He's going to take the piss around from Mouse Sports. Rops who had the first kill, stayed alive for it all, but didn't get to do much else. They'll buy immediately. AK thrown over toward Gabby on the T side as well. So interesting that they're going to go for the early purchase rather than wait. We're seeing this more and more, actually. We are. Uh, the early force buy usually get the AKs in the third round. Not going to be the case here, though. Kiabi, fresh from Estrella, is now in the North squad. He'll have the AK and he'll have Smokes, Flashbangs, and then CZ around him. Valdo, the player who dropped the AK, will have no armor. So just look out for that as we'll see whether Mouse Wars can fend off the M4s, the MP7s. We'll have to do their absolute best work here. Well, Kiabi doesn't want to fire the AK too soon. Doesn't want to give up the fact they've got this. They'll probably be aware some purchases have been made here in the CZs and Deagles, but Kiabi wants to make sure he stays completely undercover until the moment he has to strike. You can see with the SMGs up against him, he should be able to do great work here. Mertz will go down first, but there it is. The AK strikes. Oscar relays the information to his teammates, and now they come in with the Molotovs towards the quad. Drops his might by very exposed and fully blind, but still find frags. Valda drops and Mouse Wars actually looking poised to take this one, but maybe not for long. Mercel actually getting a two frags with the CZ. If he gets a plant, that'll be fine. That's got to be the absolute minimum with this investment. It's the MP9 off of the box. He's gonna hold the plant. They won't do anything of that. He's behind a safe position when they walk into the quad. They'll jump over top and easily find a kill, no less, but. The early AK not really getting what they wanted, perhaps. Do get a bomb plant, like you said, that'll help them. They could buy again. The they could buy again. You know what? Why not? Let's do it. I'm all in. The fact Sign they me up. I'm on the buy. They got three kills and Vote a plant. Vote T all. We'll see what they'll have uh, around maybe two and a half K per player. Let's have a look. Yeah, so 2,700 and 3K there. So they could get Deagle's armor if they really wanted to. Now I'm really push the envelope on the T side. I doubt it. Um, some teams would be 
kind of uh, exploring that idea. Maybe G2, perhaps. I'm not sure. Uh, Valda and AZ just get PT50. So not going all in. Just going to get a bit of a partial buy here. They'll get $2,400 per player into the next round. So not all is lost. It just cancels out the fact they got the bomb down and the pistol now. And uh, they'll try and do what they can here. MP7, MP9. Flash bangs out. Uh, from behind Chris to blind anyone in front of him, but not himself. So Chris actually hunting for some frags here. Okay, I'll be waiting towards the underpass. MSL T steps. The damage inflicted by the Glock there, but I don't think so much here. Okay, good shot with the PT50. But Sunny's there, uh, strong as ever, looking for the fourth kill of the round for himself. Might even ace it out here, but AZ does take him down. So Sunny on strong for three kills in that round after being so quiet on the pistols. Deepgo is loud and proud, but gets taken out by AZ, who's somewhat crazy. Oh, I actually bounced off a Molotov there to uh, deny the mention. It's actually worked. Yeah, you can see they're not moving. Did it land on, uh, on the spot or not? Yeah. It looked like it went far, but they actually yeah, landed tough. perfectly. That's really clever. And this might actually tell him that they're going to be coming from Banana, because why else would they be so slow? Well, because your Molotov's down, so he's got position and he's looking the right direction. Didn't quite spot them as he slid in behind coffins. That might have made all the difference, because they are both working at the front of the site. Easy kill on the first, surely. The second force by might pay off, or does it? Oscar on a rifle will get the round from Mouse Sports, and it's all in vain. Well, there we go. Great effort. They do manage to get four kills and keep the CTs... Uh, very modest in terms of their financial standing. Sunny has got a lot of money, so he can drop weapons if required. So they'll still have a full buy here, but uh, not as um, high rolling as they like, would have liked. Look perhaps. what that is, though. What? Look at Mertz. He's got the ore pal. The bomb down does allow him to bring out the AWP. We saw what he was capable of. We caught the casting for the first time in Calibre said, and I was actually... Well, second, we did see them one Pro League game, but that wasn't really a great sample. Sure. Land is a lot different, obviously different environments. So, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you. That's the first time we actually saw him. Yeah, and uh, it, it was quite impressive to uh, see how accurate and precise his uh, crazy AWP is. It's a very flicky and fast star, but Chris Shade's got one of those as well. He'll take down MSL and fall back. He seems he seems a bit like config in his personality. In yes. that he's got a little bit of a, a poise to the way that he walks, and yeah. uh, I think that shows in his playstyle. Yeah, I think that's fair. Well, we've got the opening pig mouse sports, that is. Looking for the 4-0. North. Now without their in-game leader, MSL goes down. The orb of Mertz didn't strike early. Now it's just waiting for an opportunity if anyone will make a mistake towards B. Fouled up. Towards the underpass. Not really much will happen as they go for the B control. They could go for the execution. They've got three smokes, a few flashbangs. The Chris J and Sunny both ready and waiting. Both very good at the B bomb site. They'll have to send, fend off four players though. They still have an incendiary smoke, flashbangs. So they should be able to handle this. As the final commitment comes in, you can see Sunny has dropped his smoke. He can drop the incendiary now as uh, Chris J is feeling the heat there at the back. But he has got a gap in those flames. Good grenades coming in. Chris J does take a lot of damage, but it still hits the shots. There's the incendiary I talked about from Sunny. And this is working out very nice. You can see North are just having a really rough time trying to get this B side. 15 seconds remaining. Got Oscar boosted as well. They're not going to check that. And uh, that's going to be the round. They're going to try to save their weapon. Perhaps they won't be given a chance. It's perfect B hold from our sports. Op versus Op. Chris took down Mertz for it and joke, if you will. Didn't even look hard. He just walked out from New Box. They've actually picked up that Op and brought it over, so they'll go double Op immediately. And we've talked about how much they love this, and we love to see it. We absolutely do. Oscar will be given stickers all about Imagine. That would make a lot of sense. AKs for Sunny and Robs. This is looking exceptional for the Mouseboard side, as uh, it is a technical timeout. So, not a chance to really. Discuss too much. I'll be fixing bits and pieces. Normally, like a team speak issue, or maybe the internet lagging for a second as your online games. It's the coach from home. joining, actually. Is it really? It well, is. There we go. So that'll be Ave for North or LMBT for Mouse Wars. It would be. I wonder. If, oh, I'm not actually in the server. I keep being conflicted and thinking that I am. I was going to press tab and let you know. But either way, it's one of the two. You're right, Hank. It's they're both on now. LMBT and Ave. So they're both in. That's all we need to know. Uh, maximum loss bonus coming in next round for North, so we'll take a partial buy here. Mertz, not so much with the AWP requirement. They'll be setting themselves up towards middle, trying to find Oscar and Sticker, who reside in middle. There will, of course, be Robs, who we saw. Had a little section about his individual play. He plays the apartments. Looking hates the face, though. This does not look good. Robs will turn around and get the apartment kill as well, I'd imagine. 
He might go down here, but no. Oscar plucks Valder out of the air. And MSL will get one consolation frag, but no bomb planted. As it goes towards Arch, he's low HP. Should be dealt with here. And there it is. 5-0. Lovely 5-0 indeed. Yeah, this is really smooth. Smooth operator. Maybe they're not lions. Maybe they're elephants because the mouse is winning the battle. That's good. Yeah, they could be elephants. Um, Do you know that story? Everyone yeah, elephants that are scared proverb. of Proverb. Yeah. yeah. That was... Uh, it's quite good. And Thanks. it's only day one. Thanks, man. Game one. Thanks, man. It's really not. It's day whatever day of the year we're on at this point. Game number a million. <laughs> MSL bouncing Molotov in behind Sandbags. They'll also throw a second one that deploys just inside of the connector point. Oh, smoke down on it. They're going to run right through it. And Sunny, with the smoke on top of the Molotov they threw, is sitting there. And somehow they can't <laughs> find him. Finally, surely they had to take a peculiar that smoke was. Finally, they get the kill. And they'll take down Chris. Good jump up from Volda. No one spotting from Boost. And suddenly they've got a round. There we go. Four versus I one. I won't say they've got it yet. Just the way things are going, maybe Oscar pulls this back. I don't know. Well, all things point to yes, that uh, North should be picking this round up, especially with the bomb plant coming in. If he denied that, it would be something. They dropped the Molotov to make sure he can't run in the corner and deny the plant. That's thrown by Mert, so well played by him just to eradicate one of those risks as... Uh, Oscar will be denied at anything here. He wants to save the AWP. And he might hit that shot. I think he did hit it. Murds through the wall and makes up actually re Jay's body and won the round. Well done. Uh, money not amazing for Mouse Sports, but uh, enough for a buy. More options might be dropped a weapon by Sunny. He's got 3600 right now. Same story for Stickos. He might drop two Famuses here. What's the play? Oh, we have to buy his own Famus. So there it is. Double orb set up. High rolling in that respect, but uh, some compromises made. You've got a couple of kits. As uh, Oscar will be planning his position here, looking to shut down the economy of North. But they did keep four players alive in this round, so it won't be a real detrimental reset. They will be still be able to buy just about with AKs. Uh, bounced perfectly off the half wall. Caught Chris entirely. He wouldn't have even known what hit him. It was Kirby. Very poor smoke. Well, sunny. it allows him to push if he really wants to, I guess. That's the only benefit I can see from it. But, uh, yeah, overall doesn't really help him out too much. You can see, yeah, Kiabi just ready and waiting for that. Absolutely. Dare you to play. I watched Kiabi play chess in the airport. They had, like, a, a full-size, like, sure. four chess table. Ooh, Oscar overrun. And I'm pretty sure they ended the game when the queen died, so I don't fully think he understands the rules of chess. <laughs> like, I watched the oh, queen die, I, and then they just reset my, the table. You sunk my queen. I was like, um, game guys, um, it was him and Mertz. I'm a little bit confused by well, it. You know the rule, lose your queen, game over. You're sitting right here, so I'm fine. Exactly. You'll never win. Bomb has been planted. <laughs> just going to slow things down. Bomb planted well over toward A, and suddenly with two rounds in a row, it's going to put... Now Sport's in an awkward situation. Stiko does keep at least an op up for now, and it looks like that's going to be the way it goes because no one else that close on the map. But two in a row, Delso avoids reset. Three players staying alive for North. AZ, Valda, and Mertz. Good work. The orb opening things up, and that was the force by Rimmer from Mouse Sports. They're not going to really get much for it. Stiko will try and save the AWP. AZ's on the hunt, though. It's looking likely he'll go down if he does challenge. Stick in a good position just to try and stay alive as long as possible, but they are triangulating around him. And here he comes. Stick against one, but I'm almost certain he'll be taken down here. Oh, nice shot. Prove me wrong. As uh, he'll save the AWP there. And 5 2 in favor of Mouse Sports still, but saving the orb. We give it to Oscar, and I've said it so many times. This guy, if he gets an AWP, it doesn't matter what his teammates have got, if he knows he's got to step up. Uh, you can almost bank on it that he will. Sticko with the armor P250. His teammate's not really investing much. Oscar will spend 650 to get the armor as well to allow him to be a bit more mobile, not get tagged up so much and stuck in the quicksand. And so getting to this round, we'll see whether he decides to go aggressive. He wants to, as he looks towards second middle, but he's got four players heading towards apartment. They're trying to avoid the orb at this point. They're saying, right, we know they've said an AWP. Where's the most unlikely place he will be? The end of the apartments, like sometimes the orbs go there, but on these sort of rounds, probably not. Flash out. And uh, Valde might just go for a straight up pick here. It'll take some damage, but hit the shot. But here's Oscar. He knows he's got a chance here now as they'll start to bundle out of the apartment. Interestingly, it worked out to almost a similar situation as throwing the bomb down because it landed perfectly in the hands of yeah. Kirby, or sorry, of AZ. So he plants the bomb, they'll get away with that. That could have been much worse if the bomb was in an awkward position with the op still staring over it. As Sticko picks up the AWP to work alongside Sunny and Chris J. 
On pistols, obviously not. Still Ooh. has his own AWP. Apparently, Chris doesn't need one. He's got a deagle. It's going to take down Kiarby inside of the pit, and Oscar will go cleverly across the window sills to try and get a better angle toward the site. AZ down in front of him. I thought he was going to slide right in with that op in a very slick fashion, but not quite so slick, Rick. Well, there we go. They had the option to save those two orbs, but they fancy their chances, especially after that deagle shot by Chris J. Certainly a nice idea, but ultimately the round goes towards north. They were just trying to avoid the orb the best they could, but maybe ended up running into it a little bit more than they should have done. One orb now for Oscar. In terms of the killing, we have got 11 frags on top of the mouse board squad, six at the bottom, and there'll be a timeout. In terms of tactical this time, it looks things. For the Motorsport squad, is Oscar doing his absolute best with the AWP? He got a couple of kills, but uh, not enough to win the round. Taking down Mertz, uh, able to, to get the second goal. Tactical time up for North, 5-3. to three. This is another timeout. Do you get two now? Uh, in what regard? Well, they just took one, and now we've got another one. I'm not sure. Maybe it's technical again. It says tactical on the screen. But they have three remaining. So, there Not you go. Way. First one was definitely technical. This is tactical indeed. So, I have confirmation, Henry. The world is all well again. Good. Well, here we go. Back into the action. Mertz with the AWP. AK-47s across the board, and uh, we'll see whether our sports can post around after losing three in a row now. Fantastic start, but struggling as the gun rounds develop here. Oscar will be positioned towards the banana area, backing up his two teammates. He'll go towards the coffins while they have two towards the new boxes, Sunday of which is boosted up. Chris J beneath him, but they're going for a fast mid attack. The perfect call from North. They might not know it, but uh, they've only got two players on the other side. So they're not quite like yeah, not good enough, though. We're already waiting for him. Rots. He might be good, but can he handle four more players coming around him? Apparently not. Valda takes him down, could pincer approach, and you're just going to save now. Now, Sports, you've got no chance of making this work, I'm afraid. They will start to fall back. They know it's over, and there will be four rounds in a row for the tees. Speedway, Oscar and Chris to back off. You're right, what a turnaround. It's since Abe showed up. Yep. It's all about the coach. As soon as he got in, that was it. It's over. Well, there we go. He was... Brought in to replace Ruga. Ruga. Who was part of this team for the longest of time since the Dignitas days. And uh, obviously they, they felt like they were getting a bit stale perhaps. And they started to bring in some seeing, young blood. Seeing a few long-term coaches being changed obviously with Pitta and Threat on NIP. Yeah. I, th I think that was more like Threat's decision to go. I think he was wanted to get a, uh, use his master's degree apparently. Um, he studied sure, we did spend a lot of time studying. Yeah. So. so I think he wanted to use it and actually see whether it was worth doing. Um, obviously coaching. A professional team, especially one like NIP, can be a very stressful experience. Maybe he wasn't getting what he wanted out of it. Who knows? As uh, we'll get into round number 10 here. Five to four. And uh, North looking incredibly good right now. MSO opting for the MAC-10. That's a call that'll come back to Haunted. I'm not sure. But he has got three players with the weapons without helmets. Now all five have them. So MAC-10 actually will work quite nicely. He might have wanted to get maybe a P250 with it. But uh, he'll stick with the Glock. One minute 45 very early on. Again, for a straight up rush here. Four players with the apartment. And uh, just trying to trade out frags for those things. Maybe they know Rops is uh, slightly struggling. They would be correct. He's only got a CZ. Mac 10. Could go quickly. It's not advised to go through smoke. But this is CSGO, and they will go exactly that through the smoke. Find Rops. He gets one with a CZ. Oh, no. oh, Oscar. He tried to make that perfect. He tried to wait. Until it was obvious, unfortunately, he was slightly behind his target. As Mertz goes down into the site and finds a kill as well. Taking down Sticko. It's now just Sonny and Chris J remaining. And as you see it, they are on B. This is five rounds in a row. Maximum loss bonus, but mouse sports on the CT side don't get quite the same amount of... I, I still think there's, there's a rework available for that money system. And the fact that the CTs don't get anything other than just the loss bonus. You have more expensive weapons and you can't, per se, plant a bomb to get an yeah. extra on top of it. Well, I guess that the only 
compromise to that is where they st they save weapons they still get money the terrorists do true not. yeah okay that's fair. um so that, there's something like that but um uh, yeah there's, there's definitely lots of things that could be adjusted it's not a perfect system by any stretch it used to be in 1.6 i think it's spot on but when you bring in like molotovs and you've made the fuse kits more expensive uh the, i don't think you really can justify the same system but uh either way we will be getting to round number 11 here. 5-5. Five, five. Kits were less expensive. Like, let's go back and redo the stats and history of CSGO and how many people could afford kits in round now. And uh, in terms of other changes they did, AK used to be 2,500. It's now 2,700 uh, on the T side. M4 is the same price. All the same price. Pistols are pretty much the same. Eagles a bit more. Uh, either way, I don't know far. They're just doing like, all in tactics right now, North. It's only right. Four people here. This is like old envious. Run Four people down. here. Happy, you go away here. And uh, we'll see if we can just kill everyone. Look how fast they're going, too. Minute 29. They've already got a pick. They've already smoked off the site. They're already inside of it. They've already found Chris J behind one. MSL's going to chill out and have some fun. And now the plant has begun. Stiko. Kill on Valda. I was going to keep it going, but it was kind of lame at that point. As Mertz gets in behind new box, four versus two for the favor of North. What a turnaround. Well, well, well. Our hot match of the week to start us off as well. It was, absolutely. I picked North, by the way. You did. One, yeah. But uh, it's looking quite good. Yeah, it's a very different approach. I haven't seen this kind of CS from them at all, ever. Um, it won't be sustainable. It's working for this game, sure. Uh, but uh, why not keep going with it? Rob's still trying to get a few. Exit frags, but they didn't really do too much from him. He's actually risking his own weapon, and uh, now Kyabi knows exactly where he is. He'll be waiting towards CT spawn right by the library. Frag, no problem at all. There it is. Kill comes in, and it will be 6 5. The first time North has taken the lead now after being 5 0 down. Six in a row. Maximum loss bonus from Mouseports, but it's a little bit disjointed with their cash. Some of them have been saving, some haven't. Some have been force buying. So uh, they will buy into this one. It might be the SMG. But Chris J goes with the FAMAS instead. It means he gets only one smoke, one HE, that is it. One diffuse kit on the team, that's on the back of Sunny. Smoke. And Incendiary is used at a start, and no real faster play from North continued here. I love how Banana is often cancelled out. Like, they threw a Molotov, and then an Incendiary with the other way, and no one really gains. Yeah. They got the same timing, and then it's just going to be the same fight ensuing. They have one up Chris J with flashes, though. Good read. Yep, once again, he's playing outside by himself there, and uh, he will be punished for that. Does damage towards MSL, but not quite enough. Five versus four once again. They're already on the back foot, and now they need to try and recover as Mertz waits for any sort of reaction towards middle. They'll be coordinating the team towards the mid area and seeing what they can do here. Just trying to take down anyone holding towards quarter or arch, but it's a very defensive, passive hold. From the Mouse Sports boys, you can see Oscar towards the arch, and he'll be ready and waiting. It's the Guardian angle, and he'll deliver the shot as he finds MSL. They're trying to trade that one out, but he holds such a narrow area of the map that he can't really find him in time. 6 5, and now it's a 4 and 4. One player waiting towards the B side. That's going to be sunny but uh watching ct spawn was oscar once again he's very smart and repositions knowing they were going for one of those banana splits sunny though has left b open fully exposed you'll actually have to let them go in at this point as they will fully commit 20 seconds one smoke down damage uh, sunny sprays through but he's already let them go past so he'll have to wait for his teammates to come join him walled up bomb planted coffins sunny trying to do what he can Ages and ages ago, they won rounds on the CT side. Now it's just a constant battering, especially at B. What was he setting up here? Must be a lineup. Okay, that's a skybox to emo. What? How have we not seen that more often? That's money. Do you know how many people play there in the post plant? Sadly, not this round. I've seen it throw from ruins. I've seen inside the ruins, but not from there. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, that needs to be utilized more. They're already on the fuse. They should finally get this round. The boost can't yield an angle that's required, so Volda will sit tight and hopefully not be found. And we get a sixth round for Mouse, finally. There we have it. I think that one's a little better than the ruins if you're safe, because you'll actually see the guy running out.
Sure. Either, either that or someone has to be in that position when the other guy throws it. Because you can actually catch a guy running if he has to. Yeah, oh, it's definitely beneficial. And uh, you can see how well it worked. It flushes all the terrorists out. But they still will be struggling some more. Chris J down to an MP7. Maybe that's not a struggle. He does love that weapon. I think he's one of the only players buying it in Kiev. Uh, has he got 40 kills or something with it? As well. It's ridiculous. See if they can hold on. They need to make sure they get consecutive rounds. So North, we're going to get the remainder. As AZ will be trying to open things up there. Doing a little bit of damage at the very start of the wall bangs, but uh, flashbangs coming in. Very another you know, basic default coming through. Looking for mid control, but they've already snuck past and got in towards CT spawn. How have they done that so quickly? Sony will have no idea. Surely. Some I guess the first round. We traded it out and they uh, each other. Mertz didn't like Valdo, apparently. New to the team, already making friends, I see. Chris knows he's got the bomb, so he's going to back off, but he's well aware of the fact that they're rotating in behind him. The last bullet through the board works out perfectly. Gary, yeah, he gets taken by Rops. That brings us to the one-on-one, -on -one, but he's got a long way to travel to get back over to the B site. Bomb will be planted. You can see Rops is very, very far away. Salvages a smoke from the floor, one of the corpses. And he has got the defuse kit, but he's got so much ground to make up here. I, I get that he wanted to go back for the kit and a smoke, fair enough, but I think he should have been anticipating that this was toward B sooner. He's almost too late now. We'll see whether he even has a chance. Well, he's got to read. Well, the right. He's, 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 he's just going to smoke and hold. It's the best thing he can do. So, quick smoke. Lance almost perfectly. He's going to have to go deep. Oh, I think it's actually too deep. I think even if he got on that, he might have been spotted. Either way, Kiabi, good positioning. Takes the round at seven for North and a reset for Mouse. Well played, Kiabi. Perfectly positioned. Took a bit of a gamble to sit in the garden, watching, waiting for the crossover. If he did not come from CT spawn, he pretty much wins the round with the amount of time Robs took there. Um, there was no chance for him to really have anything to do in the round whatsoever. They have been reset, and they will take a partial buy. Or oh, maybe they're all in towards the end there. Deagles, M4, and the AWP. It looks like they have spent absolutely everything. And Oscar will try and fend off the B-Rush. He's in the right position, and he makes the right shot. As he takes down Kiabi, no trade coming in. And that's why he buys it, to see if he can carry his team single-handedly. And that's out. Starts to work his way up banana, but Oscar's going to peek it. Spot a gun barrel, and that's a little bit easy for a man named Oscar. Bomb recover didn't quite go far enough past the wall, so they... Even if they saw it go down, wouldn't be able to do anything of that. Flash. Smoke. Smoke. A little bit late. Mertz goes down as well. Good start to the round from Oscar. Three kills. That's as good as it gets. Oh, Chris running and gunning while blind, and Oscar gets the fourth. That's why he buys it. That's why they take those gambles, because they know he is, right now, one of the world's best AWPers. And if they just get Deagles and he picks up the AWP, he, he seems to know where he needs to go almost every single time. He'll get the first kill and then reposition, great repositions, and then they'll make mistakes and he'll capitalize on them. And North certainly made a few then. 7-7, seven, seven. anyone's game coming up to half time. Who will take the slight lead, though? We'll have to find out now. Oscar flashed off. He's going to try and rush B here with the AKs. Good grenade. I'll do a ton of damage. Oh, it really does. And Sunny ready to spray them down. He'll get one. Can he get anything more? Throws the HE again, trying to inflict more. We'll connect here. 19 HP. There it is, the final kill. And that should be the B site open here. But a gap in the smoke. You never know. This could work out for them. They've addressed that. Rightfully so. It's just going to go back in. So 7-7 seven, seven and a half. Wide open. I could argue, though, that North, having come back from being down five rounds, are certainly in the better position, more so on the T side of Inferno. MSL grabs the AWP. He'll let Mertz try and evaluate what's going on up close. Mertz not had much of an impact on the off, considering it's T side, and he's known for his aggression. Mertz needs to go. Round 15. Two kits. He's one of them. Down to 49. Flashed off. Manages to dodge it well enough, but Mertz is still on the pursuit, perhaps a little bit too eager, as it's going to cost them and cost them dearly. Stickle gets bolded. They just had to find AZ, and they've done exactly that. Bomb is going to be close to exploding. <gasps> They're off it. Is that is that not them? Um, oh, okay. This is the replay, right? I was going to yeah. say. I think that should be. I'm, I've got it in my ear. There's lots of time there. Okay, well, we're good then. Well, we'll be 07 in favor of the Mouse Sports. So there we have it. Bomb was defused. I can confirm. And it'll be 87 at half. Matthew, what a half it was. Back and forth, 5-0 to kick things off. Then losing what six or seven rounds in a row. Oscar with the force by an AWP to save them. 
Wow, the force by was brilliant. So too that particular round as they all funneled in his direction. Definitely need a better second half, I would say, because they certainly gave away a lot. With that, we'll take a short break. We'll be back right after this. No, that's right. Between maps, we throw it to break. We go on camera, stand up, we throw it to break. Well, we bring things back in. Another close game. Another close halftime scoreline at 8-7. to seven. Again, it was 5 nothing for Mouse Sports. So you would have thought they would have ran with it. But apparently, bringing the coach into the server was all North needed to do. Well, they changed things up, didn't they? They just went for a four-man stack mentality on the T side. It's like, right, let's just go apartments. Let's just go banana. One work, work the rotations and the flanks. And we'll just go in and try and gun them down. It was working out very nicely until Oscar arrived with the AWP and shut down their hopes and dreams. And uh, Sunny was looking pretty decent as well, especially in that last round, getting lots of nade damage off. And the retake was successful. So a decent half. Maybe Mouse Sports would have thought they'd get a bit more than that with just, well, with a 5-0 lead at the very start and then lowering <coughs> North in so closely. But uh, they'll still be fine here. They win the pistol. They'll be confident they can take this one. And we'll have a look as that develops here. We'll get into the second half momentarily. Inferno is our chosen map to keep things off we will have another map between these two teams coming up next is our hot match of the week so it should be the very best one we have i think it's interesting to see the journey of north whether they'll return to maybe a top five team we'll have a look as uh 2018 continues a very fast-paced year lots of tournaments lots of online games all the counter-strike all the time so uh, it's difficult to practice and kind of develop and have time to find new strategies and executions and little tricks as uh, such a stacked calendar map. Yeah, it is a stacked absolute calendar. Good to know that there's a little bit of a break in terms of land play from sort of end of this month to, to mid-April. There's a few weeks in there where, including some now, some teams aren't going to be attending some of the events that are on the calendar coming up there. Uh, obviously, select the V4 event at Budapest. I think only FaZe and Mouse Sports are sort of our top teams are going to that particular party, if you will. If you want to call it a land party still, Henry. Yeah. It's always a party. Uh, it, it's yeah, so there's there's some time for teams to really I guess grind it out and find form I, I think Chad had a tweet today talking about teams being able to really sort themselves after all the roster changes Valda Mertz both aggressive toward boiler, but both backing off immediately And I don't think Valda actually spotted anyone through the window when he went in side of the room, but if he did Fair play they could set accordingly Mertz will stay in the hallway. We saw the first kill of the game in the same position from Rops Sonny and Sticko gonna go that direction, but Already Mertz has backed off. Does Mouse Boards bring the same level of pace? Well, this boost has been very prolific. I'm sure it'll be pre-fired at this point, and there it is. They will absolutely look for it. MSL will have to try and strike first from Rops to the PC50. Then open things up and get a dink towards TRB as well. As actually Oscar got the initial dink, Rops to finish him off that PC50. Bomb will be planted. Looking very good for Mouse Sports at this stage. And uh, we'll get into a 5 or 2 situation. Valde and AZ doing what they can. No kit available, so they'll manage to save the armor here. AZ backs off. Sunny shots. AZ responds immediately, though, from CT. That controls at least the chance of him going down immediately because he still should in this situation. Has armor, but two players facing him. Cuts off Oscar. Knows that Rops was on the corner, but Rops smartly backs off knowing that he knows that angle. And he's now alone with the peak, but they'll double it up. And Chris gets the kill. We go nine rounds for Mouse. Definitely do. Well played. Mouse Sports getting it all done with that P250 towards the B bomb site. Managing to find the initial headshot. 
Second kill for Rob, so they made their way in. If you get the first two kills and no reply, it's five on three. The smoke and CT spawn, especially, it's almost certain you're going to win the round. As uh, here's North continuing their trend of not force buying the second. Let's get upgraded pistols, no armor, no nades. One flashbang for AZ. And they'll send four players towards the B-bomb side, trying to challenge with those deagles and see if they can find a few one-tabs here. Valda might be given the opportunity. He does do some damage towards Oscar. That is about it. He'll have to fall back now and see if he gets another chance to fire off one of his shots here as he'll go to the middle again. Nothing landing just yet. Tried desperately with the Deagle Hold. Uh, taken down by Oscar. MSL. Gonna swap out the gun given his HP. Gives away the Mac 10. And now rotate around. And it's Oscar that's already inside a library. Mouseboard's another great round. Obviously, you'd expect them to be in the better situation given that they won the last and have the guns. But MSL actually takes the Mac 10 back for whatever reason. They decide he can keep it. I don't want your trash. They'll concede. They'll hold the weapons that they do have. Deagle, CZ. Obviously, the aforementioned Mac 10, which also has a Deagle for MSL. So they want to save a little bit for the next round. They're going to have to yeah. essentially full save. Might as well. And try to see what's available with the Mac 10. Like you said, a Deagle for MSL as well. So he can drop that to a teammate. He can use the SMG. But Mouseballs won't be too worried about that. It's still fine. They'll treat it like a gun round. Go together. And use the smokes, the Molotovs, the flashbangs. They know that uh, Danish Deagles are you don't really want to mess with. Three players surviving though, as all the mouse sports players exit through the apartments here, making sure everyone's still alive. Just checking for anyone running through the spot that's sticking on the helicopter block, to make sure no one's looking for weaponry or grenades on the ground. So nothing really North can do with this one. Like we said, some safe pistols. Maybe you can buy another one. Valor gets a Deagle. And I'm still with a Mac 10. I'm not expecting huge things, but you never know. Inferno certainly lends itself to the lesser weaponry with the tight cubby holes and little areas you can find multiple frags of the weapon like the Mac 10. I'm not expecting much, but you never know. Oscar working his way up mid. As Volda boosted behind the pillar, double showdown because both players will be peeking. It's to get more bullets in. They only needed the one from Volda. And then they swing from the left as well. It's a good setup. Crossfire, four people, but it's working out. I was going to say, but, because I thought there was going to be a slight stipulation and everything before the word but wouldn't matter because they got a kill in return. Apparently, it works wonders. Look at everyone that's dead versus those who are alive on north side. Just a sloppy round from our sports, I'm afraid, going up for that first pick. Didn't use any utility, didn't flash it, didn't smoke it off. Just thought they had it all under control. It'd be absolutely fine, but they met the Deagle of Valda. He gets one, and then AZ comes in that PT-50. Great shots by him. But, uh, yeah, Mouse Sports didn't really have to go up one by one towards middle. Just Rob's now in a four versus one. Bomb down. Can't really see a way he gets out of this one, but we'll see. He's in towards the boiler room steps right now. UMP just hoping. Someone gets a bit bored and goes hunting, but they've got a bomb. Why do they have to move? Yeah, exactly. There's really no yeah. need to move. Rops is just being optimistic, I think. Well, maybe like he gets him second guessing whether he's coming from CT spawn. He's gone all the way around banana, something like that. Just trying to buy as much time. Just get someone doubting their setup. But that's smoke confirms that KRB knows. And there's one kill. Mertz was low enough. At that point, he just needed to be out front to get the information rather than risk him going down after someone else had already fallen, if that makes sense, to take a high HP player and then have him vulnerable. So that's fine, because North, hey, look, that was a round that they gambled for that stack on, and it worked out brilliantly. Well, there we go. 10 to 8. Mouse sports, double digits, but uh, North certainly hot on their heels here with the eco victory. Orb comes out for both teams, Mertz and Oscar. Quite a tantalizing battle. We'll see if it works out. Smoke towards the team step down. So challenge. So you take down some of his teammates. There and at this point, he can just fall back. Nades towards steps out to do good damage towards Oscar. Only four, it all counts. But opening pick didn't have to expel too much. I want smoke and a flashbang if it gets you a kill, certainly worth it. Stick out, Palmer's gonna find someone here, but no one on the other side. There is Valdo close towards middle with the UMP, but that's about it. There he is, he's playing in front of that smoke. Mertz. Common position for the oppers is going to sit and watch toward Boiler. Slides back out underneath the atrium as well. The quad. Call it what you like. Go streaking through the quad. Maybe the gymnasium. Did that once. 
It was in PEI at Andrews Dunn's Hockey School. <laughs> and streaking. Yeah, you I really wanted a smoothie from Subway, but I didn't want to walk to Subway. But the distance I streaked was actually the same distance as walking to get a smoothie. It really wasn't worth it. This is worth it. Execution towards the B side. Mouse Sports doing what they can, but they're still a man down. 25 seconds. Smoke everywhere. And Sticker knows him. They pick up the bomb by taking down Kiabi. Three versus two. If Oscar's still alive, anything is possible. They need to plan. Rob's pushing towards spawn, and he'll not have any sort of frags he has available to him. Bomb not going to be planted, but Oscar is going to do what he can about that. Same story for Rob. So now, all of a sudden, it's a two versus one, and Mertz was well cut out for him. Mertz has certainly got his work cut out for him, but he's got the gun that could easily cut them out of stone. As he'll work in with the AWP, Rops is not going to peek. He has three kills already on the AK-47, and he's the one playing for one, just one. Mertz tries to bait him out with a shot. A desperate one at that. And I think this round has to be conceded once again, so you're right. The last round... Ooh, okay, he knew he was there, but does... Oh, he sees him! Oscar's missed the shot! UMP's got a chance, but Oscar's got better accuracy the second time by. Wow. Two flashy orbs going at it then. That was actually quite cool. The bunny hop around the corner to find the kill at first oranges. Oscar missing one. And then he railed him, of course, with the second shot. Headshot. What else? 11-8. They'll take a pause and maybe calm down. That was quite a high-octane round. Tactical timeout by North there. As Mouse wants to pick up the round. I'm going to work out what they do with their financial situation right now. I can't imagine it too great. We'll have a look, though. Here's the shot from Oscar. Let's see if this first miss came in. So his teammate goes down. No swore. Look at the quick scope there. This misses a straight up shot. But then the no scope connects. There we go. Takes down Mertz. So what's the play? North will just be assessing their financial situation. Their credit is looking very low. I wouldn't give them a loan, that. Yeah. You know, sometimes those students, they just get away with these loans these days and don't really pay it back. Look at the odds. Whew. Some good returns on the north side. Absolutely. That's uh, a nice bet on Betway there. We'll see where it ends up, though. North certainly on the back foot right now. The only reason why they can't recover. 11 to 8 as Oscar has the old once again up against these pistols and rifles of North. Three pistols and Valda and Kiabi with the M4A4s. No kits. Barely any utility now. They've got MSL in towards the logs. He's going to have to play by himself with that pistol. Hoping that smoke is going to be enough for him. He realizes, well, if I'm going to get one kill there, might as well play in a more defensive position and buy some time. And so he'll fall back. They've got four players towards the A site now. It's key to hold the arch. And that's how jumping and checking every possible position will eventually fall back. Falling back, he'll also get Kiarbi to ro rotate back to Coffins on an M4 in support of his position. Oscar on the AWP. He was very good when they went for the AWP purchase in the first half, and he didn't have much to work with. MSL, discouraged by the fact that an aid sign directly on top of him has already jumped off the boost. That puts more pressure on Kiarbi, but still MSL finds kills with the CZ. Sonny's going to take him back down and return, however, with a back 10. Both teams are roping together what they can. Stringing together the kills in sequence is now Mouse Sports. You get a bomb planted. Goes to where the water as well as Volta. Yeah, they're already going to save. They're backing off. So another round, Mouse Sports, 12 to 8. Absolutely. Mouse Sports looking good here. Remember, this was a force buy from North, so they have to save some weaponry. They can't go in with absolutely nothing. At least they seem to think so. So Volta, Kiabi will save the M4 here. AZ to saving a pistol. He has got armor, though. And a flashbang. As they'll have to let this one slip by. The Mac 10s of Sticker and Sunny doing great work against players about. Helmets there. And overall, this is looking very good for Mouse Sports. Remember on the T side here, there's no reason why North can't bounce back, considering it is a CT sided map. Bomb will almost certainly go off now. There it is. And uh, Kiabi, with half HP, will just be holding onto his weapon. They're not going to be found. For only $2,000, they can't keep bringing extra pistols in and trying to. Level things out and not win rounds. It's costing them too much. I might have to see the full eco for Merton MSL and see if they can maybe get something going. Another pause coming in. I assume it's from North once again as they work out how they distribute the welfare. Actually, could be by Mouse Sports. Maybe they've got to just kind of gather from their coach his thoughts and whether it's worth upgrading those Mac 10s. Are they going to be using the M4s in a particular area? What are their tendencies? 
just a chance to calm down and work out where they think they're likely to go. Obviously, there's no way of knowing, but uh, the coach will have an idea as to where they go on their partial bias and things like that. As we'll get into the next one momentarily. This is only the first pause from our sports. We've got three remaining. Very similar system to land. Um, online. Time has a lot different. You probably can talk in the technical rules. I really can do much about that. But uh, we try and keep things as similar as possible to the land environment. Where possible. Where possible, yeah. Obviously, uh, you can play a little more naked in your bedroom. You can. Play fully naked if you like. Don't recommend it. Very sweaty chair. Maybe not. Maybe it's a cold room. Could be. I think that's probably the biggest difference, though. Or playing naked. Absolutely. Mert's position's great. Is it? <laughs> Doing that. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. No. Sorry, it doesn't cut it, son. Oh. Go to your room. One of the rifles go down. Kelby probably wants to save his at this point. He's going towards bottom and middle. Goes to, he steps to save by the looks of things. We're going to the bridge. And uh, his teammate AZ wants to save the CZ, but uh, he has been spotted. Just barely. Try to make like a turtle and put his head inside of the shell. Sonny's going to chase them down knowing that they're over toward the apartments. Kelby should get the kill onto him. Ooh, slow. A slow to react, but it's all right. We're all fine. We're all alive. Kelby gets one. Gets an AK for it. That'll be a nice little upgrade. As Oscar looks towards the bridge for anyone to make a mistake, AZ might be offering himself up. Indeed he is. Oh, get the reef trade? That's an interesting move by Kelby. Why was he trying to find that frag? It doesn't really matter. 13-8, they'll have money to buy here. Still not amazing. But enough to get rifles out. Mertz won't be able to get the AWPs. 8 and 15. Not his best performance. As of yet, Inferno is a difficult map for all, but especially if you can't even buy it on the CT side because you're constantly on the back foot. 20 kills for Oscar, 19 for Robs. Those are the names you want at the very top there. Chris J a little bit off the pace. It's been fantastic for them recently, so surprising. And seven. Mouse Ward's returning from that Kiev star ladder victory, which was another stacked tournament. That was no walk in the park. They had the likes of FaZe there, SK Gaming. Navi. Anyone Cloud else? Nine. Cloud Nine. North. Everyone was there. All the boys. All the boys. No, they won it. And they won it convincingly as well. And Navi. I mean, they did put up a good fight in the end. Well, certainly won the MVP. Only the second time, I think, that a losing team player has won it. Maybe even the first. I remember they posted about it. I don't remember what it was. Someone will remind me naturally. Sticko and Rops reminding us that Mouseports have the advantage in this round as the bomb will be planted default. And a very split up defense is. And Masel wants to try and strike from Quad. That nade might take down Kiabi, but he doesn't repeat back through the door in quite the same fashion that the nade arrives. Good smoke. MSL's forced, therefore, to go over top of the hay bale. Spotted by Rops. Should be peaked by Chris. Tico tries to slide out onto him as well, and they're going to run. They're going to run while they can. But 14 rounds now for Mao's Esports. Very convincing stuff. North just can't get it together here. After finding seven rounds in a row. In the first half has been very quiet on their half of the server. Remember, they have just returned from uh, Katowice, so uh, there's, there's always a bit of time for them to take this day off. Today, obviously, a travel day, and they're, they're still going to be kind of uh, dusting themselves off from the tournament. It wasn't amazing for them, but uh, like we said, they are rebuilding right now and trying to come at it from a different angle as North take another timeout. They have one remaining now. He's three so far, 14-8. Trying to work out what they can do here. You've got to aware of the format of Pro League works. It's an online league. Um, you have a home and away game each time. So one map here. And uh, they'll do another map. North Mount Sports. So there is each of them count as separate uh, right. points towards the leaderboard. So it's definitely worth it. It's not like a best of three. If you always win the next map. You need to try and win out as much as possible. Two separate best of ones essentially. And uh, a lot of stack teams in this league as well. All the big names. You know and love maybe missing teams like gambit and vp but uh, they've always seemed to struggle in online events so can they close it back in they fought back valiantly from five nothing down in the first half i was convinced i thought north had something in this game but it seemingly slipped away quickly as well in the second half they've only gotten one round 
That was round three. Yes, it was. That full Ika victory. Equals PG50s no armor. And a Mac 10. Looking for map points here. Uh, game points as well. Like I said, this best of one is its own separate entity. As we'll get into another situation. Words has a FAMAS instead of the orb. They really are struggling on this easy half. It's been shambolic. As uh, default comes in, trying to push anyone back towards the B site. Kyabi's there alone. He only has an M4 and one smoke here. And when does he want to deploy it? Seems like now. Hasn't even got a one minute mark and he has no utility left on that side of the mark. And uh, he'll push down towards it. And he knows his teammates can hold the A side of four players, absolutely. But how long can he hold with just that one smoke? He might not have to. He does take some damage through the smoke and we push back down to 56 as they coordinate themselves towards middle. And we'll try and take down MSO. He's in the cubby hole in the corner. So we're going to rotate back over toward B, but does so at exactly the wrong time. Mertz might be the one to discover that and call it just in the nick of time. Gets a Molotov down that will allow Sonny to walk in. Nick of time for MSL, but perhaps maybe a, bit a little sooner with that smoke down because Chris J was already through it. Gets the shot back toward the arch. AZ smoke inside of the site, flashed as well. Had position that was perfect at the boxes, but being blind, nothing he could do with that gap. And the smoke, it's a battle both ways. And suddenly it's just Kiavi left to try and deny map point. And look how far away he is as well, just exiting the banana now. He's got no kit, no nades, half HP, had two kills to find, and a bomb to defuse. It's not looking good, let me tell you. As he comes up the quad, has to be silent, has to give himself some sort of fighting chance here. Can't just run around the corner like one of the elephants we were discussing earlier. And he might find his kill, but no. Sticker ready and waiting. He does find map points there. And the money's still going to be very low for the CT. He's going to have about $3,400 as they hit maximum loss bonus. So I'll we'll have to buy what they can. Maybe take another pause here. 20 kills still for Sticko as he joins the 20 club with Rops and Oscar. He's been getting a lot more attention recently as well. Obviously, there's up in discussion whether he was going to be replaced in this team. They kept him on. They won their first big tournament. So, yeah, probably reason to keep him a little bit longer. I guess they won Mykonos before that. Um, but uh, this one was a proper stage event with a crowd and everything, a crowd against them. So that was, uh, I think that was a milestone for them. They obviously did very well at Mykonos and in the ECS finals as well, but no crowds there. It's more like a, a classic LAN. As we get to round number nine, looks like BXQ to try and finish things off here. Could work out. And it's just Kiabi and MSL waiting for them on the side with UMPs. Really close range, and maybe they can hold this one off. It always seems to be the most desperate of buys that work out the most tremendously. As the incendiaries are landing, the flashbang's looking good. MSL, yeah, the UMP's probably going to do enough work here. Oh, maybe not. Okay, stick it through the smoke. I thought that was the frag that was going to save them here, but we have two players coming from the banana. Three versus three. And it will be Valder now. Trying to do what he can. Does do damage through the smoke. CT's on the banana side. Quite far away. There's the Molotov I was talking about from Ruins. Um, Valder throwing it now. This is the one you liked. Goes towards Emo. So he must still be in the round. Well, we'll see if it forces anything really to happen. It does certainly count that Oscar's been pushed out of position, but his AWP still has ambition. It's easy to get Oscar back, and Rops is going to go hunting. 16 HP to try and win this game at the moment. And swinging around. They're already on it. They're tapping, though, but he's got some time. Do they have this? Nope. I don't think they do. They were too late to get on it. Far too late. So him just staying alive is going to end map number one, and it's Mouse Sports that take it, Hank. They do. What a game. After... Looking very strong, Mouse Sports. They started as they intended to go on. They got the five Apologies, zeros. by the way, for the halftime. I, we don't take a break. Totally. So we, we did in Katowice. We did. That was my fault. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did throw a break. It doesn't exist. That's good, though. It goes like breaking the 4 forward, showing what happens when we do take a break. You know, you know so that's right. We just sit here and uh, act confused. We yeah. don't really know what to do outside of the world of Counter-Strike. Well, there we go. It will be a landslide victory for Mouse Sports. Looking very good. North just couldn't get going on this city after. They couldn't get the all from Earth at all. Constantly chasing the money and uh, ultimately find himself in a bit of a tricky situation. First map, not looking too good at all. Well, with that, we do take a break very quickly. We'll make sure that we jump back in with the desk before we start off map number two. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Incendiary out. 